This is Jacob from Rebelflow here to talk about what is the JAX deep learning framework. So what is JAX? So JAX is a deep learning framework, kind of like TensorFlow and PyTorch, uh, but it's another framework that's written by Google actually. And you can kind of think about it like NumPy for the GPU. And so over the last two years, JAX has really kind of started to take the scene as the new machine learning framework out there. And so it's going uh, as far as being the framework that the new vision transformer is built on uh, all the way to powering research at DeepMind. Um, so this is some really exciting reasons to be excited about JAX and to like take a look at JAX if you're in the machine learning field. Um, so JAX at large, like I said, JAX is kind of like NumPy and it, it operates very similar to NumPy except you can configure it to run on your GPU. And there's a lot of other nice features about JAX that we're going to get into here. So let's dive into a little bit of uh, JAX code here. So JAX has this grad function, which allows you to um, basically take the derivative of essentially what is your NumPy operation. So you can kind of be running in JAX JNP um, your, your NumPy definitions, and then you can use grad to, to take, uh, take the gradient of that function, and then you can update um, in a training loop. Um, another uh, function in JAX is J, uh, JIT. Uh, so this allows you to optimize uh, your functions to run it uh, uh, efficiently. So this, you can essentially just like decorate a function or call a function with JIT. Um, and this helps optimize it to run uh, on the hardware that, that you're running on, which, which is a, a really nice feature of JAX. Another one is VMAP, which means that you can uh, basically uh, send different uh, uh, functions across dimensions. So that means like if you're running through a batch, you can just kind of use VMAP to go across that whole array of different batches and you don't have to rewrite the function uh, to handle that multi-dimensionality. So that can really speed up uh, your development time. And, and you can use a function more flexibly then because you don't have to be uh, stuck on a certain dimension or dimension width. Um, and then another one is PMAP. So PMAP is uh, for mapping your processes across uh, multiple processors. So like if you have a multi-GPU, you can use uh, PMAP to map that function to be uh, making operations across uh, across GPUs. Um, and so that's all just kind of handled for you. You don't have to be writing the logic uh, to implement these functions. You can just use them to either decorate your functions or you can uh, put them, uh, call your functions with these, with these JAX functions. So those are kind of the four uh, big JAX functions uh, that are, is JAX's claim to fame. That is GRAD, JIT, VMAP, and PMAP. And uh, now we'll go into a little bit of a discussion of like, what should you compare JAX against? So JAX or PyTorch. Uh, so JAX and PyTorch are both very NumPy-esque, so they feel a little bit similar as you're programming in them. Uh, but JAX uh, functionality with the lower level uh, can be preferable for certain research. Certainly now certain research is being done in JAX and, and that's uh, making it run better. But in general, if you have to default to one of these, I'd say probably PyTorch because it just has more history of libraries and utilities. Uh, you'll be able to convert out of it better. You'll be able to uh, pick up different networks that have already been built. And uh, that kind of portability and ease of use is definitely gonna be something nice for PyTorch, but if you're starting a network exactly from scratch, uh, you might want to just start researching in JAX. That could be a good option for you. JAX versus TensorFlow. So this is kind of interesting is that they're both developed by Google and uh, TensorFlow has kind of just blown up in terms of how big it is and how, how hard it is to kind of like use. And it's, it's just sort of like a huge uh, monolith now. So JAX can be kind of nice if you want like something that's a little bit more fresh and easier to use. Um, but that being said, TensorFlow does have the same advantages that I was talking about with PyTorch in that it's been built for years. There's all kinds of pre-trained models for you to, to leverage different projects, different examples, more you know documentation, all of that stuff is gonna be uh, found with TensorFlow. So um, I guess, you know, kind of summing up here, what does JAX lack? You know, it doesn't have a data loader, so you're gonna be writing that, or you're gonna use like a PyTorch data loader. Um, and then uh, it also uh, doesn't have the same sort of deployment uh, portability because it's, you know, has, hasn't been around as long. So if you're gonna implement this network actually into your software, you might wanna look uh, in other places that have been more heavily optimized uh, for that kind of thing. 
Um, so when should you use JAX? Use JAX if you're starting a network from scratch, you might be doing research in machine learning, uh, and maybe you just kind of want to learn some concepts, and then JAX is a really good option for you. Um, otherwise, you might want to look at PyTorch or maybe even TensorFlow um, to bring your initiatives along with, uh, with uh, greater velocity. And another fun thing that I like to write here is there's always the trade-off of building versus buying. So if you're in computer vision, uh, that's something to think about and think of all of us over here at Rebelflow. So uh, thanks for watching this video and uh, happy training. And of course, as we always say, happy inferencing. So we'll see you in the next video.